All right, so we got a ton of questions in the last video, and I appreciate that. This is going to be part two of answering the toughest questions in bass fishing. Okay. Don Parker said, will you be using a red crankbait at Okeechobee? <clears throat> if they bite it, I will. But for the most part right now, no, I don't think I will be. I think that uh, I'll be doing a couple other things on Okeechobee. But I got a couple in the boat, and I got one rigged up, actually. So if they start biting it, I'll throw it. Parker said, is Hunter coming pro 2024? This is a sneak peek, but maybe in 2023. Me? Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. I don't think she has any aspirations of fishing um, tournaments. And then he also said, are you and Hunter Shryock joining Team Icon next year? That is uh, not the plan at this point. Greg said, if the fish are on bed and they aren't biting, where do you go to get your limit and what baits would you use? If the fish are on bed the right way, they are biting. Like, it, if they're actually on bed, they are biting. But if they're up, lingering, acting funny, a lot of times I'll just stop sight fishing for them and just fish around more. But they, if they're on bed, they will bite. What else we got? Daryl Coates asked a question. All right. He's like one of our um, loyal followers. Yep. He's a good one. Because he always comments. Lots of good comments. I like him. Yep. I do have another question. So he must have a, so we, we might have another question that we need to get to. Fish are weighed in during tournaments from all different types of cover. As far as you have, as fast as you fish, have you ever just turned right from the lake from takeoff and fish nothing but obvious cover with the most effective baits for that cover? Just seems like it would be an effective <clears throat> tournament approach. Hashtag just don't suck. Hashtag team wealth. He's giving away my secrets right here. Yeah. That's literally. That's juice. That's what I try to do every single tournament. There's different feeding windows. Deer in those feeding windows, I try to do exactly that. Fish the most obvious cover with the most obvious baits while they're biting. Now, sometimes you can get into a lull and run a bunch of good stuff with good baits and not catch them. But if they're biting, that's exactly what I try to do. Richard said, dude, I need a PB and I'm heading that way in a week. Hit me up with some knowledge. They, they bite down in Florida. Florida's good right now. Really, really good. So you can pretty much stop anywhere and have a chance at a 10-pounder, I would assume. Most of these lakes down here have a, quite a few 10-pounders in them. Jeremy said, my question, if schedules aligned, would you be up for a 1v1 back here in Central Florida following your elite event on Okeechobee? <laughs> I would be up for it, but as soon as we leave Okeechobee, we got to go to Seminole. Yeah, we don't even have a day. Don't even have a day. we got to go. Hayden said, what did it take for you to become a professional angler, specifically the Elite Series? Did you fish college? Looking back, what would you have done differently to get to where you are now, and what are some pointers to make it to the point you are today? That's a, that's a really good question. I did fish college for a very short period of time, then I transitioned more into fishing BFLs, regional stuff like that because I felt like the the ceiling was a little bit higher in those tournaments so fish BFLs went to the All-American then just decided it was time to take a plunge and jump in the opens now I fished the opens in 2019 and that's how you qualify for the elite so no matter what route you take eventually you just got to jump into the opens try to do well in AOI and qualify for the elites they only bring in a handful a year you know and if you can be in that top bunch it's potentially life-changing so as soon as you're ready, you jump in the opens. Whatever path it takes to get you ready, though, that's up to you. Jesse said, what is Kyle's best advice for guys without live scope? You don't have to have it. There's only a certain few situations where you have to have it, and even in those lakes, you're not going to just absolutely die without it. You know, like if you're fishing for smallmouth, it helps a ton. If you're fishing offshore grass, it helps a ton. Offshore at all, it helps a ton. But you don't have to have it just fish your strengths do what you want to do on those lakes and you can still survive without it you know if, if you go to a largemouth fishery where they live shallow spotted bass fishery where there's current even smallmouth fisheries where, where there's current you don't have to have it you can still get by without it there's just probably 20 percent of the lakes in the country where you probably can't consistently compete for a win without it sam said what is your favorite way to catch bass <clears throat> that's a tough one i got like three my Number one favorite is probably a frog in tournaments. Second is probably a swim jig. And then I really, really like bed fishing also. But in tournaments, it can get a little stressful. 
Nick says, what plastic swim bait were you really on top? Um, I was reeling a few, actually, a few different ones. There was uh, three or four different brands I liked. I was just kind of cycling through them, and they all seemed to catch them. Like, it was every single one of them that I threw seemed it to get bites. It was more the technique than the It was more the technique and the speed and the profile of the bait than the actual style. I threw probably three or four different types and brands. It was just, you know, any five to six inch long swim bait with a paddle tail that you throw weightless and just reel it through the grass, they're going to come up and bite it, you know. Okay, this is Daryl's first question. Where's Nana and how's the family doing? They're doing good. <laughs> we just went out to eat right before we left. Went out to a nice restaurant for, so my little brother's birthday, my grandmother's birthday are like three days apart. So we went out to eat with both of those and had a good time before we came down here to Florida and be gone for a month. So, you know, she's doing extremely well. She'll probably be at Seminole, I would imagine. Duncan said, what's your favorite jerk bait? <clears throat> he asked what line did you throw it on, but I think you've already answered Yeah, my favorite jerk bait is uh, whichever one they're biting that day. I've got a bunch of different ones I throw, you know, the normal brands, but I've got five or six different brands and styles and links and colors that I just throw all the time. It kind of just depends on if it's cold. If it's cold, you want one that's more slender, that doesn't do a lot of aggressive act action. If it gets really warm or if you're throwing it around grass, something like that, you want something a little bit more aggressive, a little bit louder. So you kind of just want to figure out what technique, what application you're going to put it in, and then pick the jerk bait that works the best in that situation. I got a, a little bit of light. Is that bothering you? No. We need it because you can't. <clears throat> Sun got dark quick. Anthony said, what is your favorite or go-to on the water snack or meal? Number one is beef jerky. That's my favorite thing to eat on the boat, 100%. It's just, it's just expensive. Julian said, what are your thoughts on scent? I'm not a big believer in it at all. I've got a bunch of different types of it. I've got every type of it. I've tried it. Never seen a situation where it makes that big of a difference. Okay. Who do you consider your number one bass fishing mentor? That's tough because I was kind of a sink or swim type. Uh, my number one guy that influenced me the most though definitely was a buddy of mine. I still fish with him at home. His name is David. And he took me fishing to all kinds of different lakes whenever I was young. And without him, I would not have been as exposed to different lakes as early as I was. So he's definitely the one that probably exposed me to how diverse different lakes are at the earliest age. What brand of handheld scale do you use? I use a, that Rapala one that stores all your weights. Stores up to eight fish. That's one I use. David Cooper said, do you think live scope has hurt or helped your fishing style? It has definitely helped it. So people think that I don't fish offshore and I always have since, you know, way, way back. I've always fished offshore a little bit throughout the day. It's made me more efficient though. I can, I can go run a couple places and see if they're there or not. So it's made me fish with a lot more confidence offshore which definitely helps, but as far as, you know, well, what I prefer to do in tournaments and fishing shallow, I usually have it turned off for that. What technique do you feel you can do no matter what lake or time of year, the thing you're most <clears throat> confident in? Flipping, 100%, no matter where we go, you can catch one flipping. Florida's a lot different than Alabama. Florida's a lot different. These bugs are getting me. Yep, they're getting you, they're, they're all out. As soon as that sun goes down, they come out to play. Okay, when a tournament comes up, how much do you know already remember about or remember about a lake and how much do you have to research so you remember you know a lot of lakes we go to are very well publicized been a lot of big tournaments on most of these you know consistently every single year there's tournaments i keep up with it kind of as it goes i keep up with tournaments generally you know all the way from bfls up to you know the bpt or the uh, invitationals or the opens or the elite series no matter when the tournament goes there i always try to keep up with it the best i can and then i still do a ton of research also whenever I get there. So kind of most of it I already know. I still do some research though when I get there. What is your favorite swim, swim jig color? My favorite swim jig color is white and that's just because I can see it so well in the water that it helps. It's just more fun to watch them eat that white one. If I had to pick one to fish with all year though in tournaments and everything to catch the most bass, it'd be black and blue. Kevin said, Kyle, how is the new Motor Guide Tour compared to the other brands of trolling? <clears throat> I prefer it. You know, I've used every every brand. I really, really like it. I mean, it's got the smoothest foot pedal, has a ton of power. 
you know it pulls my boat right right at three miles an hour usually a little bit over three but you know it's just how smooth the foot pedal is it's not jerky it doesn't do any funky stuff hard to, it's not hard to correct the arrow is hardwired so i'm using live scope the arrow is always in the right spot which is kind of a problem with some brands but i really like it so this is a long one all right i know nothing about bass fishing or tournaments <laughs> I know you can't have ladders and stuff, but if they made a bracket that would swing up over the top of your grabs, would you be allowed to stand on it while you're bed fishing? Just some sort of base that you could flip up and down. You could even call it some sort of support brace that you can stand on to give you a little more elevation to see better. We're, we're not allowed to put anything on top of our trolling motor, over our grafts, anything. We're not allowed to manufacture anything with the intention to stand on. It has to be from the factory, so I can stand on my trolling motor bracket because it is a option. But I cannot put anything on top of the trolling motor, and I cannot put anything on top of the grass. Byron said that it that was dumb. That okay. First of all, that don't make any sense. That what <laughs> he said that what is dumb clear. Oh, that water, water. is dumb clear. He said spring fed lake question mark. I didn't see any springs on it, but um. I'm sure there's probably a spring somewhere in it, yeah. Somebody said, is this Lake Panasofsky? One of them might have been. Not that, not this video. Not that video, no. Somebody said, what lake is that? Small, little local lake. So, Kyle said, what's your favorite poker hand and why? Nine, seven of clubs. I like the number nine. I also like the number four a lot, but I've always liked nine, seven. And I prefer clubs. That's just my favorite hand. Jack nine, nine seven. Those types of hands are my favorite hand. But if I had to pick which one I'm gonna be dealt, it'd be pocket aces every single hand. So somebody said, if you're practicing for a tournament, why are you not just marking them and saving them for the tournament? Serious question. Not being sarcastic. I always do that. What? Oh, he he's talking about these last videos. Yo, that wasn't for the. We, we we're weren't not having a tournament. We weren't having a tournament there. We was just fun fishing. Andy said, have you ever fished Magnolia Lake in Keystone Heights? There are some monsters. I have not, no. Do you think forward-facing sonar in a jerkbait can be the absolute best way to catch suspended fish, or is there another way? There's a few different ways. You know, swim baits are taken to play. You can catch them on top waters. You just kind of got to feel out the mood of the fish for that day. There's a lot of different ways to catch them. The jerkbait is pretty consistent, but for the most part, you got to have four or five different baits ready for them whenever you see them. West Point and March, what are you throwing? I'm going to throw a lot of different stuff. Everything from a jig, cranking, top water. I might throw a drop shot some. Everything. Like, that's a lake where you can do whatever you want to do and can have a chance at a big one. I think that's all my questions. All right. But so. since we answered, or not we, we didn't answer them. Since you answered all their questions, I have a question for them. Okay. If we came out with Kyle Welcher merch, would y'all buy it? All right, that's what Hunter wants to know. And what do y'all want? Like, what type of merch do you want? Like, like t-shirts, sweatshirts, hats, hats, t-shirts, hats, hoodies. That's probably the standard stuff. That'd be it, right? And what do you? And what do y'all want on them? Like, what style? Give us some ideas. Give me, there we give go. Give us some design. Give us ideas. some ideas for the merch. Cause we're gonna maybe do some we keep getting comments about it so if y'all would like some let us know leave us a like and give us a comment down below so we appreciate it guys it's getting dark practice starts bright and early on okeechobee so time to eat some dinner and get in the bed see y'all see y'all later appreciate it guys